Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Hello out there, my Hello Self audience. I'm so excited to have you here today. We've got a a fabulous, I can't even say the words, a fabulous show for you. And you're going to be amazed with the guest that is here. And I will introduce him and let him say hello after a while. But right now, I want to remind you of what Hello Self podcast is about. And it's getting your dreams and goals off that someday shelf and living them now. And my guest is going to help you look at ways that you can turn your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. So thank you so much for being here and for all the other times that you have joined Hello Self. So we'll go ahead and get started today. I have a like I said, I am so honored to have this guest today, Nathan Myers. And i it's just amazing. I asked him, I couldn't even remember, how did we meet, Nathan? And you just never know. We have hello self moments all the time by accident, just by saying hello to somebody or smiling. I remember one time during the COVID, I was at the Kroger meat counter. And we all had the mask on. And we were standing there waiting for the butcher to wait on us. And I remember this man looked at me and he said, and I'd never met him before. We were both shoppers. And he said, I can see the smile, even though I can't see the smile. So I think that those are hello self moments where we really get in touch with the God part of us. And that it, that it just, we just are triggered to say something. So I think that's how Nathan, and I do that all the time. You all know who I am. But anyway, I bet you're waiting to get on with the show. So we all start that. My guest today, as I've mentioned, is Nathan Myers. Nathan, I am so excited and so honored to have you here today. Thank you, Patricia. It's it's great to be here. I was really honored when you asked me to come on. And uh, I love doing stuff like this. It's a lot of fun. Like you, I love to talk and I do a lot of teaching and instructing too through the through the years. I'm I I love to gab. Let's gab. Okay, we're gonna get your story so everybody can hear it too. And So what I'll do is I'll give you a bio that Nathan gave me about some of the stuff he's done, and that'll just be our jumping off point. And then I'll turn it over to him to give you the real story (laughs) of how it all happened. And I started Hello Self Podcast because I truly believe that in everybody's story, there are many gifts and lots of glories. And so in hearing someone else's story, my hope is it'll hit some hello self moment within you and cause you to take action on the dreams that you may have had since you were a child. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to read the bio and then I'll turn it over to Nathan. Nathan Myers is an award-winning actor, director, and designer. He is the co-founder of the Fort Worth Actors Studio. He is the director of the ICVM, and I'll let him tell you what that is, Gold Crown Award-winning feature comedy, Aria Appleton Shines. And he was the lead designer of the Capermon First Century Village and Gardens. And I may not have said that correctly either. Project featured in seasons one and two of The Chosen. And I'm sure any of you who have had television (laughs) have seen that. He he recently production designed the feature Matter of Time with Sean Austin and the series County Rescue for Great American Pure Flex. 
He most recently held the position of Supervisory Art Director of the feature Florida Wild, starring Myra Sorvino, produced by Rick Eldridge. Nathan also has a small acting role in the film opposite actor Jonathan Sheck. As an actor, Nathan also just guest starred on the TV series Vindication Season 4. He is represented by Treasure Coast Talent in Los Angeles. And here he is with us here in Nashville, Tennessee today, sharing his story. Nathan, let's hear your story now since I've given them the bio. Hi, Patricia. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me on. I am so excited to be here with you. Uh, I love uh, to talk art and film and achievements. So let's talk. Yeah. I, I was just getting to know Patricia a little bit better, even just this morning. And we were talking about my my beginnings. And I actually grew up in Indiana and Kentucky and my dad was uh, a church planter and a pastor. And so we were dragged around like good PKs all over the country. We lived in North Carolina for a minute. We ended up in Texas for the most recent ministry that my dad did. And he retired from that ministry in 2011. And, and he, but he planted churches for 40 years and is an incredible man of God. And just one of those people that really lives the life of the love of Jesus and helping others and ministering to others. And he and my mom are just absolute gold. So I had a really blessed upbringing to be able to be raised by such incredible people. And they they were not a huge, they didn't press us to be a doctor or a lawyer or a, anything in particular. They just said, you can do whatever you want to do. And with wow. God, all things are possible. So just whatever you want to do it. And I think that's a little unusual. Most people don't get that type of encouragement and maybe freedom to do whatever you want to do. And, and so we were blessed in that way. And out of right out of high school, I went into a seminary a youth missions program and studied Bible and then thought I was going to do, thought I was going into ministry, ended up on a mission team working in Russia and worked in foreign missions for a couple of years studying Russian language, teaching English through the Bible. And and they came back to the States. In fact, right after I moved back to the States, I spent about a year in Indiana doing some reacclimation, trying to get my feet on the ground mentally. I ended up in a church internship at the College Side Church of Christ over in Tennessee, Yes, and, uh, which was actually my first uh, opportunity to drop in and do something in Tennessee and, and actually live here. And then I lived in Nashville for about six months. And then I moved home back to Indiana and started working with my brothers, and which kind of is a the backdrop of all of that. That's the education and early life. But I was always an actor and an artist and interested in the arts. And in high school, if I could take an elective uh, that was non-academic, I was going to do it. If, if it was drama or jewelry class or ceramics or that's drawing, whatever. That's what I was going to do. I spent most of my high school uh, developing as an artist and I was doing musical theater. I was singing in a show choir, a professional level show choir. If you're familiar with all the show choir of Indiana and Ohio, that it's like competitive show choir. It's ridiculous on one level, but a lot of fun on another. And, and so I was just doing all of it and I was just obsessed with the arts. And and then when I got turned into ministry for a minute, I think the Lord was working some things out in me, but I look back on that and I'm not entirely sure I was called into that space. I think I did some of that stuff. If you, a lot of you Tennessee people, the church of Christ, and you know what's going on in that space. And it's a, there's a dogma there and some, there's some uh, pressure and some obligatory action that's going on if you grow up in that space. And I was, I think, feeling rather obligated to go serve the Lord. Like, I'm going to go and I'm going to go be a minister. I'm going to go finally do what will please God. And I'm actually going to go over here and do this thing. When And the irony is that after I got out of the mission work period of my life and I left that internship, 
I was very confused because I was an artist and a creative, but that particular church heritage had really very little place for me where I could take the cog of my creative mm-hmm. wheel and plug it in. Like I had nowhere to go and I felt so stymied and lost and stifled and overwhelmed by um, unhappiness that I didn't really couldn't put my finger on for a minute until finally the Lord grabbed me by the scruff of the neck. And he was just like, hey, I made you an artist and I made you a creative. Why are you doing this? Nathan, what was that? You said God grabbed you. What was, if we could look out We know that internally, but if people in our podcast are listening, what happened? Did you, were you getting very unhappy? Because society, and I love what you're saying here, society puts these broad, these strict, compelling kind of moments in our life that we're supposed to do this, or we're supposed to feel like this, or yeah. So what do you think? I know you said God did this. But I hear people say that a lot, and me too. However, what was the outward? We have the inward, the feeling here, but was there something outward that gave you that hello self moment? Like sometimes when I get people that say, I don't like my job anymore, Patricia, and it's the hello self moment that, and I say to them, when are you leaving? So I pinpoint what is, yeah. So what caused that? So can you explain to our audience what that call from God was if we look at it externally in our society? You said it earlier, you said that God nudges us. And I think one of the things that I was learning in those years is that a lot of the strictures of my past and the limitations that I was living under he was going, those aren't real. He was like, those are not for me. Those are just for man. And he was like, you don't have to live underneath that stuff. I'm, it is for freedom that I have set you free. And I am sending you back into this art space. And so, so you, were I, I got outs- several- you were feeling outside of something well, and a- you wanted. Yeah. Yeah. The irony of that is that You think you're, and I think a lot of people who go into ministry feel this way because they think, oh, the only way to serve God is to go this way and to do this thing. And and that I've got to go hand out pamphlets on the street in Mexico, or I've got to go do some sort of, of very missional evangelism. And I think the thing for me is that God put it on me very hard. And he did this through several nudges, through several people saying, you are an artist. Why are you trying to serve God over here when he's given you these gifts? So ah. why don't you go do those things? And it was very weird for me because I hadn't been given that freedom by the church. The church has said, this is how you do it. And I was going, all right, if that's how you do it, then I want to be I want to be in God's graces and I want to do the right thing. So that's where I'm going to go. And, and so it's a little ironic that uh, through several nudges from people, Ah, uh, when, yes. When I I was touring with a when I first went to Cookville, I toured with a gospel vocal group. Of course, if you grew up in the Church of Christ, you're probably singing a cappella like I was. And so I ended up singing with this a cappella group that was touring the Southeast that was tied to College Side. And and I did that for about a year. And I loved music and I was fascinated by that type of performance, having come up out of the musical theater world. And and then my brothers called me. And they had won a talent contest in Evansville for the local radio station. And they called and said, hey, the, we just won this talent contest and we're going to be on the radio. And they want it's time to put the family band together. And so yes. I took that as a nudge and I was like, OK, I'm, we're going home. So we, I went home and I know it sounds a little ironic that four preachers kids out of the Church of Christ would end up as a band, but we did. We were very <laughs> rebellious, it. very crazy. rebellious. And so we we started a band and we actually, per- we produced several records. I have one right here in front of me, actually. And what? we're the Myers Brothers. And so oh. we were, this says Myers Brothers Band. That was our brand at the time. This record is actually going to go back. This was briefly on iTunes about, I don't know, 10 or 12 years ago. 
it's a, still a very relevant album, but it's actually being re-released along with a, a movie that's coming out that my wife and I did. And so this album is actually being re-released probably early 2025. But so we, I just got nudged to get pushed over here to work with my brothers for a while. Um, we toured like that off and on for about seven years and had a lot of fun. We would lead worship in churches and we would, we toured and opened for the Jonas Brothers and Demi Lovato and had some interesting opportunities to actually get out into the greater marketplace. Um, and while I was in Texas, after I moved down there with my family, um, I, I had in high school, I had a very substantial scenic design portfolio. And this is leads into how did I get in? How, you end, ended up in the music industry. Yes. And, then, and then how did you end up production designing movies? I was just very open, Patricia. I was just I, I had if I learned one thing from my time in ministry and you talk about ahas or hello self moments, it's that I was taught that we as God's people are supposed to say, here am I send me and then go to Russia or Mexico, right? Like I'm supposed to go do something substantial or I'm supposed to start a ministry. What I what the Lord taught me in those years through some really wonderful friends and people that loved me is that. God calls us into our gifting. He calls us into the gifts. He calls us into that space. And when you say, here I am, send me where you want me to go. He wants to send you into your heart. He wants to send you right into your gifts. And I, that is what was happening for me in those years. I just didn't, I couldn't really quantify it. I was still trying to sort it out. And so I, at church, I had this lady who said, hey, why you have a background in musical theater. You've just moved to Texas. Why don't you take your portfolio and go up to Kids Who Care, which was uh, for 30 years was one of the big children's theaters in Fort Worth, Texas. And she said, why don't you take your portfolio up there and go just share with the director and see if maybe you can get a job up there. And so I took my portfolio and I had a bunch of scenic design and scenic painting work that I'd done in high school and post post-college. And so I took it up there and it was funny, Deborah Jung, who's the director of that program, opened my portfolio and she said, your portfolio is awesome. So you got some really amazing work in here. She said, but we don't really need any help with scenic painting. And, and there was a record, one of these records was in my portfolio and she pulled out a record. She said, but we do need a music director. And she said, have you ever directed music for music, like for a show? I said, no, I've been in shows, but I've never directed music for a show. And, and long story short, I ended up at Kids Who Care for three years as a music director, which is where I met my wife. We met doing children's theater together, which was an incredible, just incredible blessing. And so God not only led me back into the arts through. And it's funny, Patricia, you're asking me for a hello self moment about that specifically. I don't think I really had one at that point. I think God was just like put, giving me these little nudges and pushes and people were pushing me and I was going, what do I do? And where do I end up? I've got so many interests artistically. How do I try to focus that? And so I very much got focused on musical theater again. And then in 2000. Or I got a request from a friend to get involved in a film production. And from that point forward, I started heavily leaning into film. I'd loved live theater, had a blast doing live theater, met my wife doing live theater. And then I got bitten by the film bug. And, and I dabbled in that. I really was more of a film dilettante for a couple of, a few years. Like I was just like, trying to figure out where I might fit in there. And so I was just, I was an actor. So I was auditioning and trying to book stuff, trying to get an agent, all the normal things. And then we ended up in LA in 2000, just dabbling again, trying to just dig around and self-educating. By that, by 08, I had worked on two features and several short films by that point. I, and then in 2010, took a little break from the film industry after my third feature. And I worked with a buddy produced a documentary. You'll see it on my IMDb. It's called Who is Clint Rippey? And that's a, just an underground indie documentary. Um, and and then we ended up, I took a little break, went back to work for the church for a minute. Interestingly, like I got called over to do something for the church for about a year. And then 
And then in 20, uh, 2012, I think is about when I had my, began to start to have that bigger hello self moment where I was down. You know how if you don't really believe in something, it's not going to manifest, Patricia. Do you know what I mean? If you don't really believe it and you don't get subconsciously congruent with your conscious brain, it's not going to work. You're just going to keep hitting the wall. Yeah. And Good I did point. that for a long time. Like I just, I, and uh, Julia Cameron, I don't know if you've ever read The Artist's Way, but she calls these, she calls artists that are doing that shadow artists because you want to be doing this, but you don't really give yourself permission to do that. And you withhold and you get close to the campfire, but you never roast a marshmallow. It's, you just don't ever get there. And I was doing that for a long time. And, and then finally in 2012, I think I really did start to wake up to what it was that, that God was calling in me. And interestingly, like between 08 and 2010, I helped Tammy Lane build Capernaum's, Capernaum First Century Village and Gardens which I was the lead designer for, that was another little soiree. It was like just a, here's another gig. And that's the, those are the film sets featured in seasons one and two of The Chosen. And, and so it, you could think, it looks like you figured it out by that point, but I don't know that I really had. I, but in, I, I really had a very, my big hello self moment, I was about 35 and I, and so it could take you a while. It could take you a while to bounce around and ping around for a while. And and I got a very clear sell your house, sell your truck, come follow me prompt from the Lord. And it terrified me. And I thought, oh, no, he's going to stick me in a pulpit. I don't want to do that. Yeah. And and after some very serious praying and seeking God, what's next? What is the next thing? And that, and I had just had a conversation that summer. It was 2014. I had just had a conversation with a buddy who produces in the faith based movie industry. And he called me right after we sold our house. We're going to closing. And he called me and he's, like, Hey, I want you to produce and direct a couple of faith based movies that I have on my desk. And I said, I'm getting out. I think I'm getting out of the industry because I was burnt. I was, I'd been a dilettante and I'd been dabbling and I didn't really believe it. And I was a shadow artist and I was just bouncing around and didn't really know how to fit in it. And I wasn't, I didn't put my whole weight down on it. But when the Lord told me to sell my house, sell my truck, and I sent me back in, it was very much a very clear direction to go back in and make movies and keep me in mind. Just just get committed to it, get fully involved in it and stop playing around. And, and so in 2014, we tried to get out and then we got sent right back in and, and start. And the irony was, I didn't really know what to do, but I got to, as if you'll just get quiet and you'll be still and you'll get humble before God and you will ask you'll get guidance. And so I I got the guidance that we both got, my wife and I irrespectively, was go back in, make movies, keep it, keep me in mind. That did not mean go make Christian films. That's not what he said. He just said, go be my people and go make movies. Go do what you love to do, because when you are doing what you love, you're energized and you're full of all of that create creative energy and joy and creative bliss. And that is me. And I want you to go do what you want to do. And so we started praying about what is it? And the buddy that had asked me to produce and direct, it didn't end up being his projects, which was interesting. Like I went back to him and considered his projects and it wasn't that. And one day my wife was listening to me get off the phone and she was like, what's going on? And I was like, I don't know. I was like, it's not his, it's not that. And she said, where do we go from here? I was like, I don't know. I I'm not sure. My wife is a problem solver. She really is. She's incredible like this. So she, I, I, probably 30 minutes later, after I get off the call with that guy, she's at her laptop typing. And I was like, and I was like, what are you working on? She was like, nothing. And uh, an hour later, three hours later, she's still typing. I said, what are you doing? She's, I think I'm writing a screenplay. And um, my wife has a master's degree in drama uh, from TWU. She studied at the Gaiety School in Dublin, Ireland. She was a professional stage actor for a decade. She's a union actor. She's a, she's a brilliant triple threat performer. She's a really talented lady, beautiful, 
top 10 Miss Texas. She's she's an incredible lady. And so if there's anybody on earth who could just reach into their back pocket and pull out a screenplay and be like, what, you need a screenplay? You need a project? Oh, I got one here. She just delivered one to us, which became Ari Appleton Shines, which just won the ICVM Gold Crown Award for Best Feature Comedy this wow. year. And, and so that was the project. And that was the thing where I, I really do think we were being pushed into the space of our desires and our creative interests. Like the Lord was saying, no, I made you to do these things. Go do these things and don't doubt it. Of course, when we got in, we were working with very limited means to try to make that happen at that time. But I kid you not, when we set our, we focused on the right project and we had his blessing, momentum and doors and just everything just opened right up for us. And, and I do think that when you're in the right space and your heart is right and your intention is right and you're, you've locked and loaded with your gifts mm -hmm. and your talents, mm -hmm. man, the sky's the limit. What can happen? And from that point forward, we've continued on working in the film space and doors just continued to open for me. Uh, but once we produced that and then several more doors opened for me to go continue on in more in the production design space than in the direction space, though I directed our first feature. But when I get asked to work for other people, uh, usually I'm production designing. And if you don't know what a production designer does, they build sets and lead the art department. I have done that for multiple projects over the last few years, mm -hmm. including County Rescue, which season one of County Rescue was just shot in Nashville last year. And that was the first time I've ever been able to work in Tennessee since, I don't know, I think my sure. first project. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So anyway, I'm my Hello Self moment was really a realization at that point that it's okay to do what you're doing. And I think I was living in a lot of fear, like uh -huh. not fear of failure. I was really living in fear of the accounting. It's like fear of, is God pleased with me? And is this okay for me to do this? And uh, Hollywood is such a shady place. It really is. Is it okay to run around with all these shady people and sharks and snakes? And in fact, it very much, no, go be yes, with the sharks yes. and snakes. Then the whole thing is, we do see LA as that kind of, but there, those kind of people are every place. And we have to learn, part of our learning is how to walk among them without becoming them. And right. I, yeah, because... And I always go back to Stephen Covey. He says that all change begins with us and our in circles of influence. And so it all begins with us if we want to change the other circles that are out there that we're part mm -hmm. of. You're, and I, this is a riot. I bet people are on this podcast today are saying, she has not kept her mouth shut this long in any <laughs> podcast. And I want to tell you why. I am, you are talking about, and I know others, and I hope anybody that's listening, you can look at this and say, wow, that's where I am. And that is exactly where I am. And people have said to me, Patricia, what are you going to do? Why are you doing all these things? And so I, it's been like I've been lost my whole life. But I've done theater, I've done film, I've written books, I've, so it's, and right now, this is a riot that we're doing this because I am exactly where you're describing. I'm asking God, and I did it just before I came up here today, what am I supposed to do next? Because I'm feeling that I'm not totally happy. I'm, and this nudge has been on me for probably three months now. And I say, I don't know what to do. So I'm not going to do anything right now. I'm going to continue with what I got. But I love another thing that you said, and I want to point this out, is that we get real close, but we don't get up there and roast the marshmallow. But we stand by the fire and look. And I think that we're going through a time right now where people are sick and tired of standing by the fire and they're ready to roast the marshmallow. 
It's a b- unbelievable. I just had a meeting and I'm going to have another one this week because my sense is that the arts, this is what you and your wife are part of. And you know what? You are very lucky to have a great partner. Yeah. Yes. Thank- for sure. Tell her I said thanks. But, but I'm, it's, we're to the point, people are very unhappy. I'm having, and I still do career coaching, but people call me and say, Patricia, I don't know what I want to do, but I don't want to do this anymore. And so I think um, one of the things that I am believing that arts is the future of our society finding itself, the arts. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily performing in a film or anything like that. It's simply getting out. Words are shallow anymore, Nathan. Mm -hmm. Words don't mean anything. I did a workshop one time with a corporate group, and I said, we're going to have a communication workshop today. Have any of you ever been to one? And they said, oh, I've been. And I said, let me ask you, are you slow learners, or why are you back here again? (laughs) Because I'm pretty uh, outspoken. But you know what? We did an art show and a VP, and I'm not going to go through this story again because people have heard it, but we did a performance. And then uh, I worked with a company in Memphis, and their parent company was in California. And we made a proposal to them about what was really going on in this small group. And it was a theatrical production. Hmm. And four VPs were there and they cried. Me, two men, two women, and tears. They said, we've never seen anything like. So I am believing that the future, after all, who started doing this Shakespeare, Mm -hmm. teaching about life through the theater. Mm -hmm. So I think we're back there because... Just saying something to somebody does not change them. But you engage them or and or empower them, and they change. And I want to tell you a story about how God, I understand what you're saying, how God works. I recently had a woman that came to me. She's a CPA. Her parents, what your, your parents have given you freedom. I love that. Her parents wanted her to find something that would, Uh, give her a living. And they said, get in accounting or something like that's what she did. She got her accounting degree, then she certified as a CPA, and she got a fabulous job and worked there five years. And she called me, I'm miserable. I don't want to do this CPA stuff anymore. Now, most people wouldn't move. They would just stay there and let somebody else dictate their life. I am so proud of you for moving, even if it was other people suggesting, because that's what we have to do. We have to move forward, not knowing. It's exactly what you're saying. And I love this. Oh my God. But anyway, here's what happened. This is how God works. We went through everything and I did the coaching. And then I said, when are you leaving? And she said, I'm going to leave in two weeks. And one week later, I got a call from her. And somebody had called her that she had gone to college with. They hadn't talked for five years. And he said, I've been thinking about you. What are you up to? And she said, I'm leaving my job. He said, you'll never believe this. I am a recruiter. And guess what? She is very happy with her job now. You're right. I love the thing that you just move forward, even though you don't know, okay, I'll do that, or I'll take this on, or I'll, okay. And then you move forward, and God shows you why you move forward. I love this. Uh, you're right on, and I needed to hear this probably more. Than <laughs> but I love all of these sound things that you're talking about. What are your ne- Have you got any goals uh, for your next steps, or any thoughts, or any things surfacing that here's where I'm going well, next, or me and my wife are going here? I have two thoughts. One is on the former that you've just been talking about when we were trying to come up with exactly, excuse me, my dog is pastoring me. When when we were trying to come up with, uh, when we were trying to come up with 
how to do what we were going to do uh, a few years ago and how would any of this make any sense at all. I was given very clear direction to take my five loaves and my two fish and go pass it out. And I, and this was tough for me because I'm a cynical preacher's kid. And I was like, what does that mean? For, I don't understand what you mean for me. And it was like, look, you of all people should understand what that parable means, but you don't get it. You don't get it. The parable implies that you have the capacity to take five loaves and two fish and pass it out and multiply it. You just don't do it. And, and it ha- you just, you've missed the point. So I'm giving you an opportunity to learn what that means. So take your five loaves and your two fish, shut your mouth and go pass it out. That was very much the parenting from God that I was given. And I'm so grateful for it because it caused me to take a step back and realize, look, I've been staring at a lot of this stuff for years. I've read this book repeatedly. I was taught to teach this book, but I don't understand this book. (laughs) And Do you know what I mean? I don't get it. But then now he's given me this prompt, go pass out your five loaves and two fish and just watch what I will do. And so that is part of that process too, is you have to take action. Yes. But you often don't, you don't know where you're stepping and you don't know where the next thing is coming from and you don't know. And so part of the magic there is taking that step of faith and just going, look, I'm going to put my weight down on this. And I'm going to believe this as just absurd as it may be. And as absurd as it may seem, I'm going to put my weight down on that. And and it's incredible what we watched unfold and continue to watch it unfold as we do stuff like that. So that's my one thought on on that subject. And and you can apply that to anything. It's just I, I have applied it to my work in the arts. And I've applied it to taking steps of faith towards my desires, towards my goals, towards the things I'm actually interested in. And doors have just continued to open for me. And so on that level, I want to share that thought. In terms of what's next, this is a little, this seems like a convolution or like we've gone somewhere else, but my wife and I started the Fort Worth Actors Studio in 2014 in the wake of the production of that movie, because we had a lot of people saying, hey, where do we send kids and young adults for acting for camera classes in Dallas, Fort Worth. And I'd be like, I don't know, go over here to this place or this place. And it it was never, it was never adequate. And so we humored starting a program in DFW, which exploded. And that program took off. It's still very active today. I don't even technically live in Texas anymore, but I'm down there a lot doing workshops with the studio. And we've got incredible people like Austin A. Bear, who is on Lioness with Morgan Freeman and Nicole Kidman. He's one of our instructors from time to time. He's they're they're shooting in Fort Worth right now. Richard Blake, who just did the movie The Actor, which is out on Apple TV and several other platforms. He's one of our instructors. Stacy Sheffield, Jason Davidson, Eric Hansen, who's in Nefarious and several huge projects, the Challenger disaster. He's in all kinds of, he's one of our teachers. We have this really cool actor program in in Texas that has been a lot of fun for us over the years, educating and teaching and helping people get their foot in the door with the film industry. Um, To backtrack on some additional education, in, in 2004, I started learning through a buddy who's one of my best friends. We went to seminary together. Um, I started learning some chiropractic care modalities, one called BEST, bioenergetic synchronization technique. uh, And then later learned another called TEP, the emergence process. And both of those techniques are neuro-emotional reprogramming techniques. They're neurological reprogramming. And so you can use those to really help with anything people are dealing with. And in the and I didn't really understand that. Like I learned that as a lay practitioner just with a friend because my friend was going, "Hey, you should learn this. You're intuitive. This is intuitive work." And I was going, "Yeah, man, I'm touring with a band. I'm working on this movie. I don't I'm, I'm not sure about that." I start learning it on the side, just in the background. Right. And in 20 in 2010, he looked at me and he said, hey, you are already as as adept as the doctors in Bentonville, which is where the training was happening. 
you're already as adept at the, as these guys and you're already at a mastery level. Why don't you go up to Bentonville and let Dr. Mortar certify you? And I said, mm, maybe. Three years later, Patricia, I finally succumbed to that. And I go up and I and I was certified to do best a bioenergetic synchronization technique. That's Dr. M.T. Mortar Jr. If you've ever heard of him or that's mortar.com if you want to look those guys up. And so I get certified to do that. I go back and do mastery certifications in 2016. And then Dr. Mortar died. And I never, I used this stuff for me and for my family and it was insightful and it was good helping us just be healthier in our own lives and more spiritually centered and clearer physically and energetically just across the whole board. And I was using it for our kids. And and for me, it was just this practical, I had a, a really interesting aha, another Hello Self moment for me was three years ago. Austin A. Bear, who came to the studio to teach a workshop for us, he's the one I just mentioned who's on Lioness, which is one of Taylor Sheridan's shows at Paramount. And so he's he comes to teach a workshop for us. He did a workshop for us pre-COVID, and it was we got so-so feedback from students. And then he did another one in 21, and the students were like, yeah, it's all right. It was okay workshop. And so he's with me, and after the workshop, I'm hanging out with him and we talked till midnight. And he was like, are you watching The Chosen, the TV series? I said, oh, yeah, I am. I'm, I know what it is. I said, I'm not really watching it because I have trouble with the willing suspension of disbelief problem because I designed all those sets where they shot the series. And so I have I'm having trouble getting through seasons one and two just for visual reasons. And he said, wait, what? That's here? And I said, yeah, it's an hour outside of Fort Worth. I'll take you out there if you want to go see it. And he was like, yeah, let, let's go out. So a couple of days later, we go out to Capernaum Studios. I show him around and we had a good time. And on the way home, he starts telling me that he was struggling with what he had decided was serious PTSD. And he was having some major issues he was basically retiring because he had, he really couldn't act anymore. He was, if he got his heart rate up, he was, he would fall apart. He'd have major panic attacks and he had left LA because of this panic attack problem. And he walked off of the set of Netflix's TV series, Unbelievable. And he plays the main character in that series. He walked off set in a panic attack, having a major psychological breakdown and ends up at the ER, ends up at a psych hospital. He grew up Catholic, so he goes back and talks to a priest and is getting nowhere over here. He ends up in an evangelical church in Burbank, and he said those people at least took him in and prayed for him, And and but he was still a mess. They sent him to John Eldridge's man camp, the Wild at Heart man camp up in Colorado, if you're familiar with John and Stacy's work, Wild at Heart and Captivating. They sent him up there, and he after he does those workshops with them. And th think about it. This guy has face planted before God. He's really seeking like, why is this happening to me? And he's physically just destroyed. He'd put on 50 pounds. He was a mess. And, and he said, after all of that, after giving his life back to the Lord and really seeking all of this help from all these other people, he was 5% better. And I, I said, and, and he's telling me this in the car on the way home. And it landed on me like a ton of bricks. You talk about a hello self moment where God took something I'd been developing in for several years on the side, doing something over here, um, going, yeah, I'm not sure how this equals this or how these things meet up or where they cross. I don't, I, I would teach classes and I'd be like, I, I see, I, I teach a Stanislavski class at the at actor studio. And I would drop in some of what we do neurologically as practitioners. I would drop that into a Stanislavski class and I'd be like, oh, this kind of neurologically, this makes sense. And this has to do with effective memory and sense memory. And I'd put some things together for people. But in the car with Austin Bear that day, it landed on me like a ton of bricks because he's telling me his problem. And I said, oh, I get it. I get it. I understand what's happening. And he said, what? And I said, I know you don't see me in this light. I said, you only know me as a producer and as an artist. I said, I, but I think I can help you. 
would you humor me? I'm an unlikely source for you to get this information, but would you humor me and let me work with you? And I gave him my background, my backstory about training with Dr. Mortar and Dr. Phillips and several people that I've worked with. I said, can I, would you just humor me? Let me work on you. He said, what do you think the problem is? And I said, well, you have textbook complex PTSD. I said, but I said, it's not you. It's the characters that you created. How many characters did you create over, over your career? And he's been at about 40 big Hollywood projects. How many characters did you create that were in high stakes, high emotional trauma situations? How many of them were running from the law? How many of them were, they were the law or they were the villain or they were the bad guy or they were running from a bear. It's like, how many of the characters have you played like that? He said, all of them. And he is, he's noted for playing those kind of darker brooding characters. And I said, I said, they need Jesus. <laughs> and he laughed. He was like, what are you even talking about right now? I said, they are the problem. And I said, your body is taking the bullet. And they, all of that emotional trauma that you've created in the process of developing all those characters is actually creating a major uh, physiological problem in your body. And I said, it's not you. I said, and you need to be, you need to understand the Lord loves you and you are okay, but they are not. And so I said, we need to treat them. We need to clear this gunk that you've created and it really is a form of disassociative identity disorder where we have a bit of a splitting of the ego and we have some issues over here and the body's still reacting. All of those characters, he's, played, he's been in like 40 movies, all of those characters inhabiting one body and all having trauma. And uh, he came, he, he said, let me pray about it. Let me think about it. It all sounds really weird and new agey and bizarre. I don't know what you're talking about right now. Let me think about it. I said, pray about it. That is, I said, I told him, I said, your workshop wasn't very good. This is why you're here. I said, your workshop was not the reason you're here. You are here to do this work. And I knew it because, man, the Lord was tapping me on the shoulder real hard. If you've ever experienced that. And I'm going, okay, I get it, Lord. I'm okay, I get off. Okay, I, I understand. And and he he, two days later, he burst in the door of the studio. And I keep a chiropractic table popped up there and I work with, people all the time. And I've been doing that for 15 years. Somebody's got a headache or a student isn't feeling well. I just think, get on the table. Let me work on it for a minute. And so he popped in an hour later. It took about an hour to treat about 14 characters. I think maybe we did that day that just working through the trauma. And he came up off the table, completely symptom free. And he went back to LA, miraculously healed, right? And, and we thank God for that, but I do know that opened a new door for me where the Lord was like, do you understand why I gave you all of this information? And do you understand? And I went, yes, but I don't know. I went back to Dr. Phillips, who's one of my mentors in Phoenix. And I told him this story and Dr. Phillips went, oh. he was like, man, he was like, that is, you have to write that book. No one, he said, I don't know anybody who teaches Stanislavski who understands effective memory and emotional memory, who also understands this side of the neurology and the neurological right. reprogramming for, for trauma. And he said, you're the guy, that's your thing. And, and I went, yeah, let me think about it. This year, the, the bottom dropped out of everything with Hollywood. I did one big movie this year, Florida Wild, and had a wild experience on Florida Wild with Aspen Kennedy and, and Jonathan Sheck and Mira Servino and several people on that movie. And, and then the bottom kind of tanked out. We, we went through a crew, a union strike. It's an election year. Everybody, money's, hyperinflation's crazy. People were, all these production companies pumping their brakes. Uh, and, and so I just suddenly went like without work for a moment. And I went, what's this about? What do you want me to work on? It was like, write that book. And so that's what I've been working on. I've spent... I spent part of last year working on the book, but then I paused it. And then this year, since April, aside from I did the Chosen's film camp at Camp Pablitzel in Midlothian, Texas this summer. But aside from that and working with clients privately and some of that I do with my with my trauma work that I do with people, 
I've only been working on the book. That's what I'm doing. That's my next thing, Patricia, is I do always look for film work and artwork. It's That's a given. And, and that will always be a part of my life. I just, it's ironic. I'm not production designing County Rescue Season 2. I bowed out of production designing it. But I've already auditioned for County Rescue Season 2 twice, which is really funny. Uh, Nathan, you're saying, I th- oh my gosh. We, about this gentleman that you were working with, people ask me, what is my purpose? And you just, I want to highlight this because I think I always tell them everything you're doing at the moment is your purpose. Yes. Because, and we often say, oh, that doesn't amount to anything. But as we look back, and you did, you were an actor, you were a director and chiropractic. Oh, dear. And, but then it has a purpose. And this is why I think our society is struggling right now is because we only deal If you think about it, most of us only think and speak to the mind. And Mm. we forget that we have a soul. Mm. We forget that we have a physical body. We forget that we have an emotional self and a mental self. But the ones that we mostly deal with as individuals or even as uh, coaches, I totally got out of the coaching kind of profession because it was a certification, do this, do that, do this, do that. Mm-hmm. And you'll be, you'll make a million dollars or you'll, and we don't include t- too often. How do you speak to the emotions of this person? How do you speak to the physical body of this person? And what you just described is taking the total human being into account. And we don't think about that. Just like this gentleman got haunted by all these negative parts. We start to take those things on as our persona of who we think we are. And society tells us this, you can't do that. You can't do this. No, you, oh, you're too old to this. And Mm -hmm. the whole thing is we start to take that on and forget who God created um, uh, th- I- I'm telling you, this is a different kind of hello self moment, but it is so in alignment with what has been going on with me and what I've been believing about corporate America, because mm-hmm. I think we have many people in corporate America that how they have no idea who they, I know as a fact. I was in human resources and talent development for years, and I know they don't know who they are. I had one young lady, and this came to me when you were talking. She was an admin in this company I was working in, and she said, Patricia, I'm not happy. She's 40 some years old. She had three children, a single woman. And I said, What would make you happy in here? And she said, I don't really know. But she said, you know what? I really wanted to be a dancer when I was a young kid. When a little girl growing up, I would dance around. And I always dreamed of being a dancer. But I didn't know how to get there. And I said, what could we do in corporate America that would make you feel like a dancer? Let's think about that. We started brainstorming. And Nathan, guess what she went into? In that same company, she went into corporate training. I got, I opened up, we opened up something for her. And so about six or seven months later, I brought her in the office and I said, how do you like that? She said, I love it. It's exact. And I said, so how do you feel like you're dancing? She said, I get to move around. I've got an audience. I get to speak some things that I truly believe in because she was in accounting. And I I feel like I'm dancing. I'm happier than. So we in corporate America, we can be a more productive environment and building people instead of putting them in a prison of this is your limits, do this job or do whatever. And I am out to do that. You have just, uh, with everything that you've been talking about, 
we, we could talk for two hours, but <laughs> we're going to start winding up. But I see you have something else you want to say. Oh, I was just say I had a similar experience when we were producing our feature. We started pre-production and everything in 14 and we opened Fort Worth Actors Studio in 2015, kind of much to my chagrin because I, I was not my dad is a professional teacher, right? That's what he does. He's a minister and public speaker, yes, but yes. I never really saw myself in the same light. And, but when I started, I just succumbed to the idea of, okay, we're going to start a class for these kids that are part of our project and it won't last. It's probably not a thing. It's probably just a passing idea. So we start the class and I start doing it. And I had not, I'd been involved in a lot of classes as a student, studying acting and studying camera work. And I, I knew all of that stuff. But when I started teaching it, I remember coming home one night and Delitha, my wife, looked at me and she said, you're having way too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I said, yeah, I think I am. I think I love this. And I just, I never really saw myself in that capacity until I was, it was foisted upon me. And again, that was just a door that, that God put right in front of us. It was like, here, walk through this door. I'm like, really? This door? This doesn't seem to make any sense. I don't get this. And that's the story of my life, actually. But I just humor all those doors and go, okay, we're going to walk through this random door and I'm exactly. going to teach this class. Okay. I start teaching that class and I have now taught Cold Read Boot Camp, which was one of our big workshops. And I've taught that 52 times in the last, I can teach that in my sleep. And I love it. I absolutely have a blast doing it. One, it's performance. It's get in front of an audience. Yes. Talk to people connect with people, teach, tell jokes, goof around, and then get really into the heart of the matter and passionately share something that you love. Right. Mm -hmm. You get your performing out of that. You get your soul belief out of that. You get helping others like God came to you. So you get all the things that you believe in out of doing that and you're feeding their total being. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. I, I we got, We're going to have to wind it down. But anyway, I know the next thing you've got is a book coming out. And yeah, the, the you, book is... Do you uh, have a title or do you want to share it? Yeah, I can share. I've actually set up a couple of pages already. There's not anything there, but if you want to follow those on Instagram and Facebook, it's Acting Dangerously is the title of the book. Acting Dangerously. And acting dangerously is just one word at both Facebook and Instagram. And and I'm just going to apply slowly, start to drop some content out there on that subject. Oh, how fabulous. And, and I'm going to be podcasting some interviews with some actors who I've worked with, including Austin and several others, because I've had several doors open in the last year. As I've stepped down on that, right, you put your weight on it and go, OK, I'm going this direction. It's pretty incredible, the people that have been sent to me. In fact, I was I just had breakfast with Mark Fincannon recently, and he's one of the one of our top casting directors in the universe. And he said, what are you working on? And a friend was like, hey, you need to know what Nate's doing in the healing space. He said, because that's really interesting. And he was like, what is that? And I was like, barring try to explain all of this neurological reprogramming, let me just show you the title of my book. And I showed him the book cover, which is you'll see if you visit Instagram or Facebook. I showed him the book cover and and he lit up and he went, I'm about to do a big workshop on that subject with some A-listers. He was like, that is, we need to be talking about that. And it's a, it's a, it's a conversation Hollywood needs to have. It's a conversation the church needs to have, but it's a conversation that really has gold in it for everybody, no matter whether you're a, an actor or not. And in fact, I'm writing the book to just creatives in general, but I'm writing it as an actor from an actor's perspective. But it's really about anybody who performs with passion. So if you're yes. a singer or a writer, any sort of dancer, it doesn't matter. And you perform emotionally, you perform with passion. There's some, there's good stuff there for people. Oh, wow. And we will, you share all your links to that with me. I'm hoping I have all that here because we will put it on 
Nathan's podcast as we post this out there on all podcast locations. And I will put it out on Facebook and Instagram and all. And Nathan will get a copy so he can do whatever he wants to with it. So we will get all this information out to you. And he is an empowering kind of creator. And that's what the world needs right now, I think, is we need to sprinkle the gifts that God has given us and the knowledge we have, sprinkle it out there so that it might help others and impact the transition. We are in a major society shift right now, a major. And that's why people are, they're feeling even more lost than they ever had. And that's why they're angry at one another. They're breaking off into groups and saying this and that, and we say ugly stuff. And the only answer is love. And love is exactly what you think about it. If you give of what you've been given, you're giving love to somebody else. Nathan, is there anything else you want to say just in winding down, like to the audience? Anything you'd like to say to my audience? A gift. A gift. Oh, goodness. The, of a words. Gift, <laughs> uh, a gift. This has been a gift. Patricia, thank you for letting me be on here. And for those of you listening, just know that God loves you and he believes in your dream. He believes in your vision and your plan. And I remember him handing me the keys to the car at some point going, it's okay. You can drive now. You've earned, you, you're mature enough. You can do that. There is a season of our life where we may not be mature enough to do that. We're a student driver and we need to let the Lord drive. Um, and there is a point where he does hand us the keys to a degree. He goes, we have, the, all of your ego is gone and, or most of it, th this problematic ego. And now you and I are working in tandem. And when you hit that point, that's what Jesus prayed for you in John 17, which is that they would all be one as we are one. And as you move into that space and you connect the keys to the car, they get handed to you to a degree yes. and just lean into him, lean into God and lean into that relationship. And it, it, it will eventually, it will all click and the car will start. Yes. And, uh, and we'll yeah. get on our journey. <laughs> and we'll roast that marshmallow. Yes, exactly. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Nathan Meyer. This is Myers. This is a gift. Everybody has been given a gift today, including me. And I am so grateful that when we connected, I, <laughs> I don't even know what made me step up and check in with you, but it doesn't matter. Nudges happen and we just follow up. But I just like to say to all of you who were listening today, take what Nathan has been sharing and go learn from him. If he's doing a workshop someplace where you are or you get his book, Acting Dangerously, or you just want some contact with him, we're going to send you out everything because I can tell you he's a gift to the world, especially where we are right now. And I am so excited, excited that I met you. And say hello to your wife and family too, because after all, that's another gift that God has given him is the partnership that he's got. So as I always say, this is Patricia Leonard, the host of Hello Self. And I just want to say, as we always stop with this, is you must keep dreaming. And as Nathan has pointed out today, keep listening to the nudges from God because they are meant for your highest and best good. Thank you for joining Hello Self today, and may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming.